Welcome back to Aries 2021, Virtual Edition. I hope you're enjoying all the sessions on our main stage. Please also check out later the exhibition halls to visit the virtual booths of our partners and speakers. For our next sessions, we will learn more about sustainable development. Our next speakers are two women who lead and build. This conversation is between Thailand's award-winning landscape architect, Kochakon Warakom, the CEO and founder of Pora City Network and chairwoman, Climate Change Working Group, International Federation of Landscape Architects, World, IFLA World. And the Philippines' Jean Jacqueline de Castro, CEO of ESCA Incorporated and Urban Land Institute chairperson. Let's watch their very engaging chat. Hi, Coach Accord. I know this is a great opportunity to be able to sit down with you and just share a conversation about issues affecting our industry and within the prism of you know, being women leaders, right? And be able to offer perspective from two different countries as well. So Coach, I'm uh, with, an engineer, with the engineering industry, right? We're technology driven. Uh, we use technology to offer our engineering services. And it remains to be very male dominated, both on the tech side and on the engineering side, although we're seeing some headway with the next generation. Um, is it the same experience in Thailand in terms of the, in, in landscape architecture? Yes, what day everyone and what day Khajain. I'm really honored. Firstly, I'm really honored to be here with you. And I'm so great that like the women from Southeast Asia like get together <laughs> chit chatting. And yes, to your question, um, yeah, for the construction overall in general industry, both in, I'm sure in the West or in the East or in our both countries, still male dominate industry. But I, it's not about like against like one another, but I just feel that um, we are driven to the world of equity and there are more than two gender in this world right now. So I just feel that um, yes, still male dominant, but I just feel that um, the opportunity is actually more open to, to us and to all. So we do experience our own struggles at the same time. You're right. It's a great opportunity to be able to exploit and really take on that leadership, such as what you are doing in Thailand. So Koch, how important is it that women are involved in the industries? digitalization strategies right now that there's this um, drive to be more um, to be more innovative and to also provide more advanced urban planning practices especially in our country's most populated areas yeah um, i guess um there are in the city that's like let's say half of the uh, females and half of their male so if you're not putting females up on the table, no matter what gender they choose to be, it's actually um, we are um, lose the opportunity to to create a more possibility. And as we can see around the city right now, um, both like is actually we are part of it as like an urban design, urban planning, or as myself, landscape architect or architect is really male dominant. And I'm just really questioning like with the female input and with and many more gender solution, what would the city will look like? Because right now it's all about efficient grid, concrete and many other things. And we know exactly that moving forward this direction is actually not exactly the right direction when we compare to the effect of climate change, effect of resilience that our city is no longer endure to all these challenges. And it's very interesting because the role of women now, it seems is not just to participate in it, right? But to champion because through us, as you said, we're changing what it means, what it means to be successful, right? What are the success measures that we're redefining it to include inclusivity, right? And sustainability and not just the bottom line. And we're trying to also, I guess, redefine the relationship of how technology and society should be and what that impact would be. Um, I remember reading a book on the fourth industrial revolution and there was a footnote that disturbed me, Koch. It said that if the technology, this 
um, drive towards technology can exacerbate the gender gap, you know, and I just found that so horrifying that we'll be centuries ahead in terms of tech and yet, you know, unable to still address social injustice and gender inequality. And as you said, also in the Philippines, 50% are female, right? And yet we are not seen as, you know, sometimes we are deemed invisible, right, um, in urban planning. So for, um, what then do you see are the challenges, right? So we all yeah. agree that it's important for women to be part of this strategy. What is yeah. holding us back? What do we need to address? Yes, Jane, I just feel that is not only about the gender issue, but it's about the in, inequity in general, about rich and poor and things. But women being defined as the most vulnerable because we are most in the the vulnerable sector and when it's come to the problems and when it's come to vulnerability we actually as a biological factors and many like having a child um being tied to the families and many other things so i think it's for us it's a little bit more difficult a lot or even we are in the professional field but when um, we like plan to have our kids and thing, it's just like very time consuming. So I just feel that um, it's in equity in general, but yeah, women being put is in such a vulnerable. And I just feel that even this gap being like really, and especially for pandemic, it's actually show us really clearly that the gap is like actually really wide. And I just feel that as part of, um, the global citizens, we should step up and have a seat at the table and provide more seat for more females and provide more seat for um, eat those who are vulnerable. And I just feel that we, 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 as you can see, it's like many world leaders right now are females and also they're making a big change and they are making like a fight to too many aspects that I just feel that um, I feel more hope if we put more of us on the table. And, but the most important thing is provide more seat for other females as well, because um, I think this is so important that many of us still really uh, <laughs> support the male um, and forget that there are so many like follower, the female young leaders, and even the peer, female peer, that you still need a seat on the table as well. So we cannot leave anyone behind and we have to like gather each other and go forward. Yeah, Kachi, you, you pointed to so many things that are so um, crucial also, for example, in the Philippines, right? We also experience, it's almost like a, a natural glass ceiling because once they have kids, right? I have female and male engineers and yet it's the female engineers that choose to stay home, right? Because they need to take care of the children because we're not providing enough childcare. So I think that is um, um, still very much a problem um, in our country as well. And also you mentioned about women being the more vulnerable members of our communities, right? And both um, Bangkok, Thailand, the Philippines were climate, you know, we're, we're so affected by climate change, right? And it does, it's not just something good sounding or no, but it's really all about survival right it's costing us lives it's costing us our property um and um your i was very curious about because when i was reading about you how you lead porous city network and the focus is on design to be able to increase urban resilience to address climate vulnerable communities in bangkok and i just found that so amazing that you're that you are using design to be able to directly address the problem and target the specific communities that you wanted to help. Um, maybe you could share a bit more about what you do with um, Porous City. Yes, uh, but I really like um, the issue that you addressed that female are um, like more vulnerable, but we have so many um, biological factors that we have to take care of. But that's made us as us, and that's made us different than male, right? And I just feel that the caring, the um, being the voice of community, and it just have like this courage to speak up from your own, either family, your own community, or your own profession. And I just feel that I um, want to like embody like being a female and being myself. And I just feel that 
that's really lead me to 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 establish the porosity network because in in the construction field right we are talking about maximize profit reduce the um, um construction costs and many other things but i just feel that we 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 left so many people behind with many decisions and i just feel that um within Thailand and within Philippines and many other countries in Southeast Asia, informal settlement or what we call slum is actually like a big factor that the poverty of people still doesn't have a, like a right for their home to have to afford a home in the city. But we also need them to actually move on our um, society or our urban development. So Poor City Network is actually focusing on the climate vulnerable um, community, which is in my context is either um, informal settlement along the canal, who's like flood first and have no choice, or in the coastal area, who's like sink first when it's come to sea level rise, and also inland flooding, which there are so many engineers, um, let's say, con conventional engineer solution like dams and many like hard concrete, which is like, actually is too protective and many solution is based on fear, but it's actually, we have to think about resilience because I'm talking about a city of, of water like Bangkok and many other city that we have a um, natural dynamic and we totally forget about those things. And I just feel that as a female, I wouldn't say like, like mother nature, but I think we are in touch a little bit with that and knowing the flexibility, the change and care. So I just feel that we should embrace that into every industry, especially in our industry that we share. You know what, that's a great point because with engineering, it really started with trying to control nature, right? <laughs> yes. There's an essence of control and it's, you're right, it's coming from fear. Like, you know, we're going to get damaged. We're going to get, you know, we have to control what we cannot, you know, what we can't understand or predict, right? But now we have to shift, especially with a pandemic, right? Smack at our faces, right? Reminding us that, you know, especially in our countries, right? Even during the pandemic, it was typhoon after typhoon, right? We were um, also worried about floods and we, and there was, you know, it didn't care if it was pandemic, right? Mother nature was going to come and it just taught us that we can't design to control, but we had to design with nature, right? We really had to start considering nature now and work with it to be able to provide a more um, sustainable, um, sustainable home for everyone. Now, you mentioned that that's why it's important to have um, you know, actually find it, find it silly to ask why should we be heard because we're like 50% right we're living in cities as well cities <laughs> maybe <for men>. more <laughs> for, exactly for women and men that's why we also need um for our voices to be heard and I like what you said that because we offer a different perspective right um just because of who we are as well just because of how different we are um embracing our nature um uh, and to be able to be part um of that um, conversation, right? And you mentioned about technology. So uh, when the pandemic came, so we're into building information modeling. And when the pandemic came, it was in the Philippines, it was treated as, that's nice to have, right? It's just additional cost. Like, you know, we'll worry about the problems later on. So when the pandemic hit, my concern was, will it continue to be a nice to have? Will people now not spend on it? But then we realized that it was crucial, really, because why were we doing it? It was really to save on, you know, save resources, right, and avoid waste. And at this time, we have, um, you know, like 40% four, of global emission is coming from construction and 30% is just thrown to waste. And we were trying to address that, um, that problem through technology, right, that it has to be, as we're talking about, these are just tools, Right, but there has to be an end result that will offer that will yes. offer us, you know, a better yeah. environment. And I know that you're also working on specific, um, you know, um, uh, projects really that um, would actually create um, better cities. Right, I've seen some of your projects wherein you are working with nature to be able to address these current problems and build a more safer environment. Yeah, I um, really actually um, agree that we have all the tools that we need to tackling problems, but I just feel that the mindset is not there yet. 
And I just feel that um, how can to fix climate change, to fix many other problems is really about the mindset. And it's not only about the high technology, high maintenance. And I'm actually, two more days, I will be in crops 26, which would be addressing our many climate change issue. And as we are developing country, like small countries compared to many other like um, big power, they are actually um, emit, emit the, um, the gas, like the, they just like create more like CO2 rather than us, but at the end we are sink <laughs> like because of the That's zero true. and yeah. many other. It's like it's unfair, right? That we're carrying on the problems of the industrialized yeah. conditions. Of the no, it's yes, not but we really, can't yeah. afford not to be part of the solution. Yeah, and definitely. And it's really it's really not about them, but it's about us and also about humanity. And I just feel that it's definitely need more of us up there. And also with the innovation that I'm trying to create in my hometown or in Southeast Asia context is really like we are from the culture and the cultural maintenance is so important. And I just feel that we shouldn't like be so fearful that we copy many other things from the thing that's not belong to us in terms of technology. And we also need to be really like more um, mindful about learning from our past, how Thai people, how Filipino people used to live with nature harmoniously. Like Thai, we live on the still because we know we are going to flood anyway. How could you get Bangkok, like how could you avoid Bangkok from getting wet? We are like Delta City, <laughs> but there are so many efforts, like tons and tons of money. Just forget that, oh my gosh, this is the city that belong to the water and how could we adapt rather than try to fight really hard and so many like corrupted um not just money but mindset that we need to shift to the pandemics and like the way we measure the well-being through gdp like burning gas mean higher up gdp this is like really wrong being the family with like really low gdp so I just feel that there are so many like aspects that we as a designer can tackle. Like let's say like for the Sri Lanka University, it's not just the park, but it's like a retention park that helping the city with the water. From Thomasat rooftop, it's actually not about it's just a big building, green roof, but it's a green roof that edible and also slow down runoff and also like using a solar roof and many other things. And for the Jopia Sky Park, it's actually reusing what already left behind. And we have to think about this really clearly about the waste space in the city because we cannot just scrap everything from, from scratch out like, and from zero and then like build everything from news because in our generation, we don't have that much resource to consume or to burn anymore. And it's not about only just our generation, it's about the coming generation that seems like they're not very happy from whatever we will handle to them as a city. Yes. Yeah, and I think coming from the pandemic, it really reminded us not to take it for granted, right? So initially we thought, you know, um, labor um, would be easy to come by, resources would be easy. So everyone was taking it for granted. But now, as you said, we can't just um, you know, keep on using these things without thinking of the future, but instead we are now also called on to reuse, right? Even current structures, before we would be asked to demolish buildings, but now even owners are asking us, how can we instead reuse this, right? Because resources are more tight. Um, Coach, you mentioned about um, your projects where, you know, there was an end, you know, it wasn't just aesthetic, but really also of the end um, value or result that you wanted from it. And you spoke about mindset. Um, how, what is, how do you see your role? And in terms of maybe um, looking at the mindset of your, uh, of your clients or your constituents and be able, be able to make them appreciate perhaps um, what these other um, important features need to be as part of the project. Yeah, I think like for our profession, we have power than we think we have and to convince to use what exactly needs to be used and to actually shifting the people lifestyle. 
like either how they eat, how they commute, how they like seeing things. So definitely jeans, it's not about aesthetic. It's not about like being beautiful and pretty, but it's really about the inner core of the intention of each project or each, each um, opportunity that we as um, designer be in, involved in the project. And I just feel that of course, we have to answer what the client's needs, but how you answer it is actually the mindset. And you can shift the mindset and shifting is convincing. Of course, it's take more time because we're not designing something that like, oh, I want that building. Let's do that. Like, let's copycat that building. No, no, it's actually not about only form and aesthetic. Um, and I'm just talking to like architects, definitely definitely landscape architects and all the urban design that we actually have the layer of ecology of the landscape of the dynamic of the land that we always forget we only think about okay this is what the client want i have to like serve them definitely you serve them but you also need to serve your the earth you have only you have to be the uh, the architect of the earth it's not only just like being the architect of yourself and um, and I just feel that is it will be a shame if we have an opportunity and we don't do our best. Even we already know what is best, right? We we learn it. We can read through it, like the materials, how the process of constructions can lowering your carbon emission, and how could you create the equity in your design? How can people access more to whatever you can provide? How can you convince the private sector? A little bit allow your public green space to be part of the city, even visually, you know, like I just feel that even little point, little step, we have to make our great effort. And then all the benefits are actually going back to the client, like how how people view their projects, how their projects can be like create an innovation. So I'm not talking about the same old problem that we are dealing with we are actually dealing with the problem of uncertainty that we don't know yet so don't use the same way that you answer solutions right yeah yeah exactly so I, I um it was so interesting what you said right we don't realize how much power we actually have right and it's um and even looking at that as women it's embracing that power to be able to have a voice and encourage because as you said there's no um, there's no lack of knowledge, right? There's no lack of um, facts, data to support how we can do things better. But as you said, there's a mindset question, right? And the courage to be able to decide, this will be my advocacy, right? That this will be how I will move forward to build um, a better um, and healthier, right, urban space. Um, so as a landscape architect, um, how can our cities transform post pandemic, right? As you said, we can't use old solutions to address new problems, especially the uncertainty that this pandemic has introduced to us. So how do we now spearhead change into making our built environment land and coastline safer as a landscape architect? Well, like basic things, like let's say soil, like why do we have to taking good care of our soil, like our land? because the good soil create a good plant, a good plant create a healthy people. But let's look around in our city, like after pandemic, um, the public space become a public health, clearly. But we have so much, we have a hard time convinced that before pandemic, right? <laughs> like, yeah, we need a healthy city. We need like a green space. We need a clean air, we need a clean water. But right now, everyone is at the same ground. Like we, around the world, we've been put on the same ground. And if we don't use this opportunity for us to change and just doing the same to like really focus on um, car, burning gas, and you know, like instead of planting tree, create more concrete. I just feel that this is such a basic thing that relates to our health, is the health of our city. And as a landscape architect, um, we actually dealing a lot with um, outdoor and how the integration of each architecture 
how the solution that not only based on human development, like many urban design, I'm sorry, maybe urban design and engineering really focus on like the, the project itself. But mm -hmm. for landscape architect at the table, we actually will help on the team looking through like how the water will drain, how the people will connect, what's the linkage of the, the, the green space. So maybe we can create like some um, biodiversity corridor for the bees, for the birds, and also for ourselves to walk, to be able to walk. So I just feel that walkable city, low carbon city, more public green space and to pandemic interior space is actually more dangerous than the outdoor space. Okay. So let's let's we be outdoor let's 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 meet the sun and many other things. So I just feel that it should be a movement and not only just a movement, it should be a sustained solution to protect our environment, basically soil, plant, water, air. Yes. And as you said, right, it's working with a with what's around you, right? Not just like it's a building and just focusing on the structure itself. And in the Philippines, I would like to share that, you know, it's also great that we have cities outside of the metro that's starting to value these green open spaces. Wow. So we have the new Clark City that was featured in the ULI Asia Pacific Summit. So we're targeting to be a smart green disaster resilient city. Because And then, you know, it's now has a 45 hectare central park Right, which will be one of the biggest in the Philippines, maybe almost half a century ago, which was the last one. So that's something that's encouraging pedestrian um, bikes and all that. And we even have um, smaller cities like um, Iloilo City outside, um, also in our country, that's now focusing on um, bike lane, protecting bike lanes, right? Like four kilometers, just segregated bike lanes. And we have an ex esplanade, you know, really going back to protecting and rehabilitating our rivers. So it's good that our, you know, that's really the, both government and private that's also coming together right to be able to um, push this forward so and the same thing it's also the landscape architects here um, that also is pushing you know for us to be able to protect um, this landscape and be able to work uh, with what we have around that um so what um what would be um you again re reading about it is so inspiring how you also and we studied in the u.s and yet you know you came back because you really wanted to help um, your home country and be able to address a specific situation um, in your country. What contributions from women around the region have been your source of inspiration? Well, I guess um, working with the vulnerable community is actually like, I'm, I'm actually learning. I'm not like going, uh, yeah, I'm a designer, talking different language, but I just feel that um, working with, the real people, like we are like comparing to the world scale, we are very vulnerable as a citizen in the at-risk city, but we in the city that you, that even more people who are vulnerable more than us. And I just feel that learning from them is actually helping me to understand the, the better solution that will fit my home city. Like learning in the US, working in like many like world renowned company is actually a great um, opportunity for me and it set me a good standard but it doesn't teach me how that kind of standard we put into the context of Thailand or context of Southeast Asia so I just feel that um, mixing have those both two experience is actually for me as a landscape architects designer who I am and also um, the woman is well, I don't know. I just feel like the peer support and the women's support is so important to me. Like I would have like professional good friends who like really like, you know, like we need to talk sometimes. <laughs> like women, she's shedding like we are doing right now, Jane. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's so important for us to have someone to listen and process our energy or like the inner inner what do you call like kind of like the inner progress that we actually need to grow as a person as well so yeah, I'm, personal development too right yeah, it's exactly. also important for us yeah yeah I just feel that it's it's a big need for definitely for everyone but for for me especially I think having a female support as a peer as a co-worker and as a user that I'm served as a client that I serve 
I just feel that is really like give me such a such a such a learning experience that I'm still like still learning from from all of them. Yes, it really is amazing to be able to feel that support, right? To be coming yeah. from them as well. And um, so, for example, with the in ULI, we have the Women's Leadership Initiative because it's just that um, being able to support other women, right? Because sometimes we get to uh, we always focus on sometimes meritocracy, but it's not always equal opportunity, right? For mm -hmm. everyone to be able to compete in that way. Exactly. Being able to have, you know, um, being able to share experiences with other women leaders, our own challenges, because we have our own <laughs> difficult struggles, right? That not everyone also would understand. But yeah, we and, yeah. and I think it's very important for us to be an example as well. Like there are so many young, younger generation females that are looking upon us. So I just feel that is it's not about just you working for yourself or your like your own um successful like success 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 and also but it's about sharing what you have learned and going back to the community. I think it's so important the younger profession that's following us. Yeah, and the opportunities that we also open doors for them, right? To be able to That's not just inspire them, but also give them access to that opportunity. I found it uh, very inspiring, Coach. One of my one of my staff. So we do um, building information modeling services. So we're online. Even during the pandemic, we did it. So he has she had to go home in the province, right? But she was able to work with us because it was digital. And then the flood hit her family so bad, right? So, but yet. Even through that, she was we were able to you know help her out, and she was able to still work with us, you know. And it's, so it's a it's really that inclusivity, right, and sustainability that you know that it's just so in your face, right, that they're experiencing it firsthand, and yet that we're you know we're keeping people and no, you will we'll keep you. We're gonna you know we're gonna get this get through this together, right? Whatever you're going through with your family, um, because the demands, as you said, whether biologically biologically, physiologically on women, that we have to be able to embrace that and to accommodate that as well. Um, yeah. And one thing, I just, yeah, sorry. Yes. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, yeah. Yeah, and one thing, I just feel that it's not about like um, being a leader for me, like the leadership, female leadership, but it's actually about um, embracing all the team, as you mentioned. And the team is including male as well, because there's so many things that, me as a landscape architect couldn't come up with the solution if I didn't talk to like like the engineer with so much experience, but try to convince them with like a new new concept a little bit. So we work together as a team and I think it's so important. And it's not, it's about gender, but at the end, it's not about gender, it's about be, we being like a human, yes. Coach, um, having, you know, um, achieved uh, what you have already, uh, what would be, um, I guess, your possibly voice of advice? As you said, no, we're also role models, right, for other um, young women or even young landscape architects um, in our industry, in your country, globally as well. What would be the messages you would want to leave with them as they embark on entering the industry and being part of this a very important um, industry? Yeah, I just feel that um, when I enter the industry, I don't, I don't think much about the success, but I just feel that I think much more about what I have to contribute as like um, global citizens, as like a um, female from flooded city or sinking city, and I just feel that like that um, if that um, intention is really clear and whatever, because. Yeah, people may uh, perceive that, oh, yes, a successful like designer and many other things. But before you get to this part, there are so many like failure. <laughs> like, you're only talking about one success, but we don't talking about the 99 failure that is behind. So with the, with the right intention, with like understand what are you working on, like having friends to really reflect. And I just feel that it's so important that when you hit to like the obstacle, you can go through it, you don't give up. And I just feel that it is more important than being success, that's like the outcome. But don't think about the outcome, think about the, our journey and how can we be ourselves within the journey and actually learning from the others. And I think that's 
that's what that's probably my advice to to all through my experience yes I love that. So the focus on the journey, right? And you mentioned failure because that's what people don't always mention, no. right? We have to embrace it. We've gone through so much and, you know, we really have to start celebrating, right? And embracing that. Yes, I made a mistake, but I'm going to do better, right? What I learned from it, right? <laughs> and again, that's what they again. <laughs> Back up again, and then, as they said, if you know, if we made a wrong turn, then just you know, go back again and yes. do it better, right? Like we're not at the end of the line. If we, you know, we 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 see the problems now, we're not stuck, right? We can actually do better. So it was amazing to have this conversation with you, Coach, because you know, being in the same calamity driven, um, you know, where it's costing lives, I just felt like technology innovation shouldn't be limited to the those who can afford right because we all deserve to enjoy the same degree of protection from environmental and health hazards right we all deserve we're all part of of cities we're all part of, of these communities so um i always remember the um they said that we, we shape our buildings and our buildings shape us right like as you said now how these now affect our health how these affect our communities. And it's great to have this conversation with someone who's also pushing and spearheading the change over that change in mindset and realizing that let's not leave anyone behind. So Koch, it was amazing to have this conversation with you right across, you know, be uh, unfortunate we're not, we're not able to meet physically, but it's great to connect uh, being in two different countries at this point. Thank you so much, Jane. And actually, thanks for having me. And thank you for doing what you are doing as well. As like a female leader, I'm really honored to have this conversation with you. And I hope that more females will join us in this conversation. And hopefully we'll meet you in a person soon. <laughs> yes. Yes, very excited. And let's continue inspiring women and supporting each other. Thank you so much, Todd.